Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Robbins, and welcome to LPLE from Dialogue FM. We are the podcast that lets you practice listening in English. We speak English slowly and clearly, so that you can follow along and understand native English speakers more easily. I'm excited to help you improve your English listening skill, as well as help you learn new vocabulary, grammar, and idioms commonly heard in conversations among native English speakers. If you want to practice listening in English, then we invite you to join our conversation. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jesse. It's good to see you. Again, I, I haven't seen you in a week, probably. I think it's two weeks. Welcome back from your trip. Thank you, thank you. Yes,、uh, last week、uh, I was in the state of Hawaii.、Mm. Right. Now, Hawaii is、uh, a little different from what people think about America.、Right? It's Um, geographically, it's not even connected to the mainland,、uh, main forty-eight states. No, it's very,、right. very far away. Far, well, from from Seattle, it was a six-hour direct flight. Right. right. For context, that's like me flying to New York. That's a six-hour flight. Even a tiny bit longer, isn't、right. it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were in Hawaii for one week because my wife、uh, had a one-week medical education seminar there. Hawaii is really considered to be a tropical、uh, vacation place.、Uh, many people travel to Hawaii for vacation. Because Hawaii is a series of large islands with very beautiful beaches,、right? um, so lots of people like to go、uh, swimming,、um, whale watching.、Uh, they like to see exotic fish by snorkeling.、Uh, Honestly, my wife and I did none of that. Really? <laughs>、yeah. And this gets into our conversation today about our favorite vacation spots and what we like to do when we go on a vacation. For this trip, my wife and I really just wanted to relax. We know that there are plenty. Of activities in Hawaii that we can do, and we did some of them. However, because my wife had class from eight a.m. until twelve o'clock noon,、uh, that limited the amount of、uh, travel time that we can do within the island. And furthermore, we live in Seattle. And traffic in Seattle can be very bad, right? I think it's number twenty in the world, or something. That's a high rank. Yes,、It's、a very high rank. Well, Hawaii is also very no- notorious, so、um, well known for its bad traffic problems. The last thing I wanted to do on my vacation. Is to drive in traffic. Like I, I got away from Seattle to not be in a car. <laughs>、um, I, I would rather take the bus and go around town. Overall, we had the delicious traditional Hawaiian food. We went to a、uh, luau, which is a Hawaiian term for、um, a. Performance of traditional Hawaiian dances、mm. and songs, very fun. And then we went、uh, on a two-hour whale watching、uh, cruise. That's it. After that, spent time reading books,、um, taking pictures, 
walking around. That's it. It sounds delightful. Were you on the island of Oahu, and were you in Honolulu, or were you in a on a different island? That's a great question. So, correct that there are. Uh, the main islands in Hawaii are a few of them you mentioned. It's right the Oahu, now. Hawaii, uh, uh, Ku- Kauai, Kauai, and uh, Maui. Well, Maui. Yeah. That's right. We were in Maui. Oh, yeah. okay. We were in Maui. Uh, specifically, we were in the northwest part of Maui. That's a very specific area. The weather changes based on where you are in the island. I see. Yeah. So you were not really in a very big town. Correct. Really. Correct. We were in a very touristy town. Lots of uh, retirees Mm. either living in the area or traveling there for vacation. So everything was very manicured. Everything mm. was very clean and, and everything uh, w- was specifically made for tourists there. Um, the, the weather, the reason why that part of the island is very popular is because the weather there is usually very nice, right? Um, other parts, this is interesting. In the same day, one part of the island can be very cloudy and rainy. However, when you drive maybe a couple of hours to the other side of the island, the weather will be absolutely beautiful and fantastic. I suppose that's a question of the elevation uh, there are some pretty good uh, uh, rock formations, aren't there? And of course, we know that there are plenty of that it's volcanic. Yep. Yep. Um, so I'm sure that you had what do they call it? The lee side, and the I'm not sure, but there's a place where the wind hits and the place where the wind doesn't hit uh. on an island, and one side is fairly miserable and the other side can be quite pleasant yeah. um, I don't know the name of that I, I, I know what you're describing I, I don't know the term for it but your description is correct mm. because of the large mountain and volcano on the island the large mountains and volcanoes block some of the bad weather some of the rain clouds. Yes. So the rain clouds hit the mountain and don't cross it. Yes. So they let all the rain out in that area so that anything past the mountain is beautiful weather. Now we see this here in Seattle, right? Um, the Cascades. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Um, you're two hours away from Seattle. When we cross over the Cascade Mountains, uh, usually the weather is beautiful, right? This on is, the other side. On the other side, right, exactly. Right. Exactly. Sunny. It, well, it's a perfect example of yes, the grass is actually greener on the other side. <laughs> yes, on our side. Well, that's oh well because we get more rain. That's, that's right. True. That's true. Yes, nice well, and green. So I'm back. I'm happy to talk to you again and talking about my vacation got me curious we are now in march uh, and there's still plenty of time in the year like are you going to take a vacation this year and where do you think you'll go i'm daydreaming about a trip in may I would love to go to northern Spain and southern France. I have dreamed for years of walking on the, it's called El Camino, the really ancient, almost ancient, pilgrim's walk. 
to the, San, the Church of Santiago de Compostela. And there's a very famous old pilgrim route. There are several of them. There are several routes. They finally all converge near Santiago. And I might have the opportunity to be in northern Spain in March. And the town I would be visiting is right on the Pilgrim's Road. So I'm dreaming of making that happen. Uh, I have not had the chance to plan it for very long. And, of course, finances are always a question, even when you are walking with a backpack. But I'm hoping I will do that. Is that your travel style? Are you uh, the kind uh, of person who likes to backpack uh, around town? Or um, what's your I style? I prefer not. But I grew up, uh, because my father was a geologist, I grew up as a child spending the summers in the Cascade Mountains, and we moved by walking or by horseback, and in later years by helicopter from camp to camp. And so I'm very used to backpacks and hiking, but I really am mostly interested in mm, – I'm always interested in beauty, whether it's man-made or natural. And I feel as though the biggest part of my life, living outdoors, living in tents, etc., happened when I was very young. I can do it whenever the opportunity arises. I enjoy it. I know exactly how and what to do, <laughs> but um, it's not what I dream of. However, I love Spain, and I love history, and I love the idea of following in the footsteps of hundreds of thousands of pilgrims who have been taking these roads for five, six, seven hundred years. I don't know. And I love the architecture and the landscape of northern Spain and southern France, of course. One thing you mentioned that I feel we need to talk about is you rode in helicopters as a kid? Oh, yes. <laughs> this is new information. Like, <laughs> how... Tell me, like, I'm dying to know. I clearly have never ridden in a helicopter before. Oh, so, these are very small helicopters, okay. just two-man helicopters, and they have luggage, um, like a tray, a luggage tray on both sides. And the geology camps would, as I said, in the early days they would move by horseback and you would put all the the tents and the heavy food which we needed for two or three months on the backs of horses and we would spend one whole day moving camp and pitching a new camp, etc. But in later years, the U.S. Geological Survey shared the hiring of small helicopters. They shared them with the United States Forest Service. And then the camps were moved by helicopter um, because they were quite far apart, the camps. And backpacking from one camp to the other was not impossible, but it would have taken up a lot of the work time. And as you could imagine, in the high country, the time to do research to do the geology to see the rocks is quite limited because it still can be very snowy in June there so it we tried to save time you are you are familiar with riding a horse as well yes i was never a fantastic horsewoman but actually i had my first lessons when i was 4 because my father was, the first year he worked in the Northwest Cascades, he went by himself. He was the head of a group of other geologists. But he knew that the next year he would bring his family because my mother was going to be the cook 
for the team of geologists. And so we were told that my mother, my sister, and I had to learn how to ride horses in order to be ready for the next summer. So my sister was three and I was four. <laughs> and we learned not to be afraid. We learned which side to get up. I was never a very good rider, but whenever I do ride on a horse now, a lot of happy memories come back to me. It feels very comfortable riding a horse, very natural. Is that right? For me now, yes. Of course, I don't have the skill of a Western rider or a an English rider. I believe that a Western saddle is much heavier and it's designed for a person to spend a long time in the seat. So I think it's probably more comfortable than an English saddle. Um, I have never tried an English saddle. And again, I'm not a good horse person, <laughs> horsewoman, but Yes, I'm comfortable and um, I like it and I feel happy when I see that horse's head in front of me. I learn something new about you every time we talk. <laughs> I've lived a long time. There will be. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we talk about the this year uh, and you have a an, you have an idea about going to uh, Italy and Spain in May. Actually, Possibly southern France, well, southern because, France. and okay. Spain, uh, because these different pathways go through parts of southern F France as well, through amazing old villages, and it's, wow. yes. I hope you go, and mainly because I would love to talk about your experience on air uh, for the audience to learn more about. And also to see your pictures, because I'm sure those pictures are going to be amazing. First, I have to become a person who likes to take pictures. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think there are two kinds of travelers. They're the ones who take pictures and the ones who don't. Yeah. And I love to see the pictures of the other people, but I'm a little lazy and I'm... So excited just to be there that I don't want to stop and take a picture. It's interesting you mentioned the, your style and your personality regarding taking pictures. Mm. For me, I love taking pictures. Um, one of the best investments I've made so far is my new iPhone 7 Plus. Because the camera on this phone is absolutely amazing. Um, I've taken some great photos um, with this phone alone. So much so that I sometimes forget to use my other camera. Um, the other camera is a regular point and shoot camera which takes beautiful photos. But because my phone is so readily available and takes beautiful photos already, I use my phone. The only thing I don't like about my phone camera is that I cannot control the lighting uh, as quickly as I can with a um, uh, regular uh, point-and-shoot camera. Uh, nevertheless, my style is very much take lots of photos. Except for Hawaii. Really? Yeah. You just relaxed I, there, well, right? I think I took some photos I, of really unique things. However, again, because Hawaii felt... Well, that northwest part of Hawaii felt very touristy. Mm. I didn't see anything spectacularly special enough to say, oh, I need to take a photo. I took a photo of the sunset, of course. 
I took a photo of the dancers, the Luau dancers. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I took plenty of photos of my lovely wife on yeah. the beach. Yes. Uh, so there are specific scenes that in my mind I know I wanted to take a picture of. Um, however, and when I lived in Vietnam, I would t- there were sometimes I would go outside and walk around simply to take photos. The culture of Vietnam, as I have not been yet, but I understand that in the streets, and that first of all, I understand it's beautiful, but that the streets are full of life and color. And I think it's, even though Hawaii is different from mainland culture, it's still American culture. And we don't live very openly on the streets. Uh, in point. this in this country, so I think there's less to see on the street, or you have to look harder yes. here, and th- that may be true even in Hawaii. I think, from what I've seen of Hawaii, that's very true. Very true. Well, I'm really excited for you for this year. Um, you've gotten me interested in your trip, uh, and I hope you go because naturally we can have a wonderful conversation about it when you come back all nice and relaxed. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of LPLE. Let's practice listening in English from Dialogue FM. Subscribe to LPLE on iTunes to hear the latest episodes, or listen to past episodes on our website, Dialogue.fm. That's D I A L O G dot F M. If you have questions or comments about English, Or if you would like for us to use a word, grammar, or idiom in our conversation, so you can learn how to use it correctly, we would love to hear from you on Twitter at dialogue.fm or Facebook at facebook.com/dialogue.fm. <laughs>